Dr. Zayed Mahmood, distinguished dignitaries sitting over the stage, esteemed members of faculty, deans, directors, professors, my dear young scholars and students, Assalamu Alaikum. I would especially like to welcome our foreign guests who are here. Thank you very much for coming over to Pakistan and we look forward to your insights, to your views in this uh, conference. Uh, I am uh, related to this field of psychology, broadly speaking, in a tangential manner because I am a student of management and my area within management is uh, organization theory and somewhat organization behavior. And I teach courses in the area of, uh, in the fields of uh, human self and identity, human systems, uh, leadership, and so on and so forth. So here I am with that uh, very limited knowledge of psychology. My interest took me to American Psychology Association and I've been a member of that association for some time and I, when I get to know what's happening, uh, I, attempted to do, I attempted to go to one of these, one of their annual conferences but I, uh, I regret I couldn't make it for some other last minute uh, important uh, appointments. Uh, Psychology, I feel, is uh, very important and it is very significant to us, to us as a society and to us as a part of the academia. It is uh, related to human behavior and human society. And this is the subject that talks about humans and who are we other than being humans. So this is a subject, this is a discipline which focuses upon just ourselves, our lives. And that is how it is so important. And what could be more important than this? Maybe this is the starting point for human inquiry about life, about existence, about the world at large. So understanding of human self is the key to understanding the human society and psychology helps us in uh, knowing more and in discovering the multifaceted being of an ever evolving being of uh, the human self. Uh, I feel that uh, psychology has contributed to our understanding and it has uh, given us uh, uh, light on understanding the dynamics of uh, inner and outer uh, dimensions. Uh, it is also important to see that how human behavior and human societies have evolved over a period of time. So there is this uh, very important evolutionary perspective that becomes part of uh, psychology. And uh, then, of course, like any other discipline, psychology also has a way of prescribing what is good, what is bad, what is normal, what is abnormal, what is acceptable and what is not. And what is the range of that goodness and that acceptability. So it is uh, important, I feel, uh, that within the field of management, uh, there is very little understanding of human self, of human being. We start talking about managing human beings without having any chapter or any book or any preparation on human being. And this is a realization that I think is now taking, taking roots among the scholars. So psychology has implications all around. 
in the field of management, also in political science, sociology, uh, in economics, religion, and of course, uh, management, as I mentioned. This is the time when there, is, there are narratives going on about civilizations and culture. What is civilization? What is culture? And there are narratives uh, that are being thrust, that are being thrusted upon people. And uh, then there are there is dialogue, and there is uh, conflict, and we see differences of opinion, and uh, there is uh, uh, that there are maybe uh, wars being planned or fought already, or or already have been fought on the notion of the superiority of civilization and culture. So, so I think psychology can enrich that debate and that dialogue that is inherent in, within the dialogue of civilization, that paradigm of civilization which is going on for now. Psychology can provide that objective and scientific research on the basis of which we can draw conclusions which can be acceptable and which will provide a foundation for logical analysis which can lead to our, our fundamental, which can lead all of us towards fundamental truths. So I think psychology is important from that perspective of a civilization also. And there is a possibility of arriving at common grounds and discovering that common ground and uh, outlining the features of that common ground uh, for our shared understanding about who we are, the essence of human beings, and that can pave the way for a shared uh, and peaceful existence in, the, in this world. Uh, I would also like to suggest that the making of a human society and it's uh, all attendant micro and macro factors at broader levels who are, which are at work. Uh, and the behavior that goes on actually leads to, uh, leads to four different kinds of uh, interactions between people. And it is the responsibility, it is within the scope of psychology to understand the nature of each interaction and then figure out the best course for all of us. The first exchange is a kind of reciprocal, that, okay, I smile and you smile. I gave you, so I gave the shopper some money and I got in exchange some goods. So that is basically a reciprocal uh, uh, kind of interaction. Second is uh, where someone tries to dominate the other. So there is this subordination and domination interaction. And that is very, very, of course, uh, very common. And that takes place in variety of shapes and kinds. And that is also all pervasive. Two, we cannot deny the existence of that within families, within generations, uh, across the generations, within societies, and of course, within the state and government relations with these people. Uh, third is a shared voluntarism, where we get together on the basis of common values, and then we share whatever energies we have, whatever ideas we have, and we work towards common goods, and then we move in a kind of a fraternity, and we, we develop a kind of conclave. So that's another uh, kind of basic, very essential uh, human uh, interaction. In this process, I feel that we acquire certain identity, we develop certain identity, and we develop our shapes, and our, ourselves. And there are negatives and positives on each of these different kinds of uh, interactions. So psychology, I believe, can enhance the understanding of each, and it can also help us find the sources and outcomes of each of these basic uh, interactions, and it can mine the gaps of, you know, in each situation, and then it can also bind us 
in a better way, you know, whatever the situation is. My next suggestion is that when I see the world today, I feel that this is characterized by disruptions. And this disrupt disruptions going on all around. Disruptions because of innovation, certainly. Disruptions because of the speed of change in our, the way we think. And disruptions because, because of the complexity and uncertainty of our overall and political, economic, social environment and disruptions because of ambiguity and uh, equivocality of uh, what is going on. So it is difficult to interpret what's going on. It is tough to arrive at the meanings of what's happening and who said what for what and to whom. So there are multiple layers of what is stated and what is narrated. And with this kind of disruption, human life is becoming difficult and difficult. It is becoming difficult to hold on to something and then stay that way for some time and develop a comfort zone in mind, in psyche, in heart, and then arrange the life accordingly. Because change is coming too fast and change is ruthless and change is uh, the speed of change is also changing very fast. So I feel that uh, it is important, it is a dimension that psychologists need to take care of, that as a person, as group, as citizen, as a member of an institution, as worker, and as a partner, or as an associated, how can I chalk out a course for myself in this age of disruption and how it hampers, how it influences my mind, my thinking, my habits, my behavior and what pressures and stresses it is leading to within our structures of, within our societal structures of families, of neighborhoods and overall our interaction with each other. So I think that the practices of the clinical practices and the virtue of healing, that clinical psychology is there to heal, to help, has a tremendous value in this age of disruption. We need to solve our problems intelligently and we need to be resourceful enough to solve the problems that seem unsurmountable and big enough for us. And clinical psychologists can become that part, can play the role of partners and can shed light and can help people live better life. So if there is a goal, if there is a common goal among the people to lead good life and to shape good society, to build good society, I think clinical psychologists can become change agent for good life and good society. And can also, in addition, can also provide that healing, that soft healing, instruments and tools of healing, can equip us with that so that we can think better, we can address the challenges, we can solve problems, we can take care of the stresses. So that in, uh, intrinsic human talent of healing and helping. This is what I believe clinical psychologists can highlight and can then popularize and can make it available to the society. But here is a caveat that psychologists, the help from psychology is available to those who can afford it. The help from, from the doctors, physicians and surgeons is also available to those who can afford it. How can we make that help available to all who need it, whether they can afford it or not? This is a question for me, this is a question for you, this is a question for us. And unless we are able to, to make it available and accessible to all, its impact would be very limited to those who are already resourceful. 
Please remember that half of this world is shelterless. Please remember that about you know 40 percent of the world resources are with just less than 10 people. So there is great inequality. There are large number of people are living in acute situation, in distress, and they are helpless, they are shelterless, and they need the help most. So I think it's time that our governments and our institutions pay attention to it, that like health, and it's part of the health. Mental health is part of the physical, is part of the health, and it's also part of the physical health. So it, it should be our goal to provide that necessary help that is required that is required by parents, that it requires by teenagers, that is required by those who are handicapped, that is required by those who are poor, that is required by those who are disadvantaged, those who are underprivileged. We need to provide them that help. My next submission is that good life, good society, yes, they are very, very noble goals and we all share that goal. We all are willing to invest our lives for in pursuit of good life and good society. But then there is another thing which, is, uh, which really attracts our attention and that is the possibility of attaining happiness. And then not just pos the possibility of attaining happiness but also the possibility of being able to meet and attend to all desires that I may have. So my ability, my unlimited, unrestricted ability to meet my desire, that is important for me. And I call that my freedom. If any, there is any restriction on my desire, I feel that my freedom has been checked. And that's wrong. We are living in a society which is based upon liberty and freedom of human action. So, I cannot find my happiness without having my unrestricted ability to meet all my desires. So I think this is the, this is the curiosity of our time. That how far, to what extent, in what ways we can allow human beings to live just the way they desire. And then in the process achieve happiness probably. So the possibility of attaining happiness by being able to achieve, uh, able to meet and attain all the desire is a big question mark. And here is what I think research, scientific research is needed. And its connection with freedom and its balance with the overall goals of good life and good society. So the pursuit of happiness and attainment of unlimited attainment of desire, individual desire, I think these are crucial questions of our time, especially in the time where people are becoming more and more affluent, where we are tuned to more and more indulgence and where we want to have our way. We are under stress. We go to psychologists, we just can't have our way. So I think there is enlightenment that is required and human life would be, will go too wrong in too, uh, you know, wrong, it will go too wrong, too far in the wrong direction if we are not given right help at the right time. Uh, my last uh, uh, submission is that uh, there is this, uh, on the one hand, yes, this is, uh, I, I mentioned about the desire, and it relates to, of course, those who are affluent, and those who have it. But what about those who don't have it? They have the challenge, they are living in an environment of incapacity. They are living under the constraints of, uh, of hardships. So, and they are not able to meet their essential and basic needs. And they are forced by the systems and institutions and the regulations, increasing number of regulations to, to and they are subjected to laws and a very specific code of behavior. 
So those who don't have it fear the law more than those who have it. And those who don't have it feel more pressure and they are more constrained and more regulated and under more severe vigilance. And they get the worst kind of, uh, of uh, treatment and the lowest quality of judgment by the society. So here I think something that, are, that is also an issue for our future uh, psychologists and clinical psychologists. Ladies and gentlemen, these were my ideas that I wanted to share with you. I, I see very good crowd, professors, senior professors, uh, uh, deans, directors uh, from institutions. I see the presentation from a lot of institutions. And uh, I see very young people who, have, who are planning to and aiming at dedicating their life to this profession. So welcome to this very important conference. And welcome to new ideas that you would go through. And uh, welcome to discussions, debate uh, that's, that will go on. And, we'll, and I hope uh, you will also find new friends and new partnerships for your ongoing intellectual and academic journey as well as your personal life. Thank you very much.